Hey everybody, it's me Richard with Nightmares, Tears, Anyone. So, it is Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. Um, today, I'm going to be doing a review on 1991's Celia by Ruby Jean Jensen. And I've got some book mail. Come back after the intro. Hey, welcome back, everybody. So, it's me, Richard, with Nightmares. Anyone? Before I do the review and before I open the book mail, <clears throat> um, I am going, first off, to take a sip of coffee. Hi, kitty kitty. Butters just came in. Hi, Butters. You want to say hi to everybody? Come here. Come here. He's like, nope. Come on. He's like, nope, I don't want to. So, I'm going to welcome some new subscribers to the channel. So, in no particular order, let's welcome BD, Kathy Willison, Mandy Falls, Goth Raymond, Hatide. Robin Pearson, Jesse's Book Corner, and Stephen Allison. Sorry about that, Stephen Allison. So, welcome to the channel. You guys, I'm Richard. I'm the crazy one that reads all this scary stuff. Not only scary books, but mostly. So, uh, Celia. Yeah, let's get. And before I get into today's review, I want to tell everybody if you guys love horror as much as I do, and you want to see me continue doing these videos. If you have any ideas what you'd like to see me review, talk about, bring up a movie, anything, please leave a comment down below in the basement. But where I'm getting to this is, please give me a thumbs up if you like today's review after you see it, even if you don't like the review. And the most important part is, make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting that button right there. Hit the notification so you make sure you don't miss out on any upcoming horror content. But, what did I want to say? Um, yeah, let's get into, first off, let's, what do I want to do first? Do I want to open what's in here or do the review first? I'm going to open what's in here first. Yeah, it's pretty thick, you guys. So, uh, let's see what is in here. Butters. This is author mail, actually. Yeah. Right. Oh, ooh, this is a chunker, you guys. Wow. This is big. So, uh, let's see what is in here. So, this was sent to me by the author. He emailed me, contacted me through, uh, my Goodreads account, and this channel and asked me if I would be willing to read his book and I said yes I would love to uh, I always am looking for new authors and I love horror so this is from PD Oliva or Oliva a l l e v a it is called Gollum you guys 
The cover looks so badass. It says, the devil is in the details. So, this is really, really thick. I love a good chunker of a book. It is 500 and do, 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 do. Five, oh, there's a seven page author's note at the end. It is 528 pages. So you guys, let's see what this says on the back. <clears throat> it says, detective, angel, victim, devil. A haunting tale of suspense, loss, isolation, contempt, and fear. On November 1st, 1951, war hero John Ashton was promoted to detective. His first assignment, find the district attorney's missing daughter. But his only lead is Alina Francon a high society sculptor and socialite committed to Bellevue's psychiatric facility. Alina has a story for the new detective, a story so outlandish John Ashton refuses to heed the warning. Alina admits to in in incarnating Gollum, a demonic force, into her statue. A devil so profound he's infiltrated every part of New York's infrastructure. Even worse, he, he uses children to serve as bodily hosts for his demonic armies, unleashing a horde of devils into our world. When Alina's confident, confidant, Annette Fleming, confirms the existence of Gollum, John is sent on a collision course where fate and destiny spiral into peril, and the future of the human race hangs in the balance. The devil is in the details. Fans of The Silence of the Lambs, Clive Barker, John Connolly, Stephen King, and Anne Rice will be fascinated by this edge-of-your-seat psychological horror thriller with a story that rips out the heart of humanity and throws it on a slab to be feasted on. This sounds right up my alley. So, you guys, this cover of this book, the more I'm looking at it, <clears throat> it's a creepy image of, like... It looks like a demon's face with the nostrils of a skull with the teeth. And then in the shadow, in the midst of it, is a little girl sitting right there. Sorry about the glare, you guys. But yeah, this book is a, a good a good book, a good sized book. And you guys, the print is big and the lines are big. So I love that even more. So you guys, I want to tell PD Aleva, thank you so much. I will get to this as soon as I am done reading the book I'm reading now. Uh, I've got a review coming up right now for Celia from 1991 from Ruby Jean Jensen. Let's get into it. So, you guys, you all know that I love me some Ruby Jean Jensen. So I've got all of her books right down here. Yep, I've got them all. Uh, I've even got one that is signed by her that was given to me from a friend. Uh, so, we're gonna talk about Celia by Ruby Jean Jensen. Now, this is a zebra book from 1991. I'm gonna read the back of it to you guys. I'll get you, Celia. You kill me and I'll come back as your worst nightmare. I'll get you and I'll get your kids too. I'll get you, Celia, I'll get you. It almost sounds like the Wicked Witch of the West. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too. No one heard the gunshots, just as no one ever heard Celia's screams or those of her children for all these years. But in the isolation of the Florida swamps, Celia had silenced her cruel husband forever, or so she had thought. Now Celia and her three children are on the run, relying on an underground network of helping families. Celia is heading for Northern California in a brand new life, but someone is following Celia. Someone who knows her every secret destination and who intends to keep his promise. This is Celia. Now, see this creepy doll on the front that's holding a shard of glass and a big red rose? Well, I'm going to tell you guys something. This book had 351 pages, and the book was 150 pages too long. Now, you guys know that I love Ruby Jean Jensen. Yes, she's been gone for quite a while. She was always one of those um, authors that I could always relate to 
not relate to, but rely on to scare the living shit out of me, either with a creepy demon or a hellaciously creepy and evil doll. Yes, Zebra Books always did the skeletons or the, Z uh, the creepy dolls on the cover. However, this book is not one of her better books. Now, I do want to read you guys a passage in here from something from the book. Uh, so I want to read this description. It says, um, Drew watched the water. Drew is Celia's oldest son. The surface opened and a round, shiny black head rose. The, the many eyes stared back and bulging toward Drew at the window. Then a long, snake-like arm rose, feeling for the edge of the pond. Then another, and another. And finally, so many arm-leg things that Drew could not count them. Kitty, what are you doing? My cat is flipping around on the carpet. <laughs> Butters, what are you doing? He's flipping around like he's possessed. Spinning, literally spinning around. <laughs> And finally, so many arm leg things that Drew could not count them. They seemed to tangle in the pale light of the moon and stars as the horror rose from the pond and stood tall and huge at the end of its dozens of legs. Drew heard the horse crying in the barn, its whinny blending with the cackle of chickens, the grunting of pigs, a dog howled. The thing was coming toward the house, standing tall on all of its legs, reaching forward with its arm legs, staring up at Drew with its hundreds of eyes. He knelt by the window and watched it, unable to cry out, to call Mel to help him shut the window. Mel is the guy that is uh, transporting Celia and her kids from state to state to state, hiding them out in these uh, facilities for abused women and their kids. And yes, they refer to it as the Underground uh, Railroad. Um... Where in the hell was I? Oh, yeah, so Mel. Mel is the guy that is driving the car, taking them. Um... He saw it go past the barnyard, past the animals, and came to the and come to the house, and he knew it was at the wall. Then he could hear it crawling up the wall toward the window. It pulled itself up the wall, a sound that was like the whispering movements of water in the swamp around the creases of the cypress knees. A black, long, snake-like arm reached into the window, through the screen, and then another, and another, and Drew felt the cold, deadly touch of it on his cheek. He felt it sliding around his neck, pulling him out of the window toward the invisible mouth that was ready to devour him. The scream came out of him like a bubbling, like a bubble bursting. Okay, that is the kind of horror that I grew to love over uh, the years when I read a... Ruby Jean Jensen book. <clears throat> now, this book is not one of her better books. Uh, it's not supernatural. I'm not going to give any spoilers away because I know a lot of people collect her books just like I do, and a lot of people have this book and they haven't read it yet. It's also been reprinted, so you can get a new copy of the large size trade, you know, trade paperbacks or whatever you call them now. But uh, the books that are this size. And yeah, her books are slowly being reprinted. But this book, Mel and I cannot remember. The, it's been like three weeks since I finished this. So sorry this review's coming so late. But Mel is, uh, he thinks Celia is crazy. Uh, she tells Mel how she killed her husband by, after he, um, abused her and the kids for the last and final time. She vows to get revenge and she vows to kill him. Well, after witnessing this ex-husband and father of the three kids murder and torture their family pets, one after the other, after the other, after the other. Yes, this book deals with very disturbing animal torture scenes. And uh, that was what almost pushed me to stop reading it. But this book took me almost three weeks to read. It was so, I don't want to say slow, but it just wasn't your typical Ruby Jean Jensen book. I was expecting the doll to be a bigger part. The doll is only in one little teeny teeny scene and uh, it was just a big disappointment. I did give it three stars just because of 
the fact that it is a Ruby Jean Jensen book and she was a great writer. Everything she wrote was so well penned and so well put to paper that you had to stop and think. If you've ever seen pictures of her, uh, there's not a picture in the back of this book, but I will try to pop one up right here. This lady always reminded me of the little lady that lived next door to all of us. And you'd think, where in the hell does this woman get her ideas? But uh, yeah, that is my review of 1991's Celia. So yeah, I did uh, give it a three star review, um, but it just took me forever to read. Now, uh, I know a lot of you follow me on Goodreads, but I wanna read to you, <laughs> the kitty is sound asleep on the floor. Let me see if I can, Oh, he's, he's hiding his face. See, he's hiding his face. He's like, uh, I'm trying to sleep here, you guys. Can you just be quiet, Dad? <laughs> That's what he's telling me. So, I'm going to read you what I did write on my Goodreads account. Here's what I wrote about Celia. I said... Not your supernatural and scary dolls type that Ruby Jean Jensen usually would deliver, but it was still a suspenseful ride, though it takes a long time to get there. Still recommend it. This book took me three, yes, three weeks to finish it, and though it was not her usual fast and extremely easy to get into books of old, it was a mean and slow burn tale of an abused wife, mother, and her kids that it sometimes was hard to read. Warnings. Murder and drownings galore of family pets, along with scenes of torture. So if that is a severe trigger for you, do not read this one. Plus, do not be fooled by the creepy doll on the front cover. It has nothing to do with this suspense thriller, except it is thrown out of the car by the horrible father. Would recommend it to suspense and thriller readers and fans. Not really what I would call horror. And I did. I gave it three drops of blood. So you guys, that is my review of 1991's Celia by Zebra Books. Uh, once again, you guys, I'm Richard with Nightmares, Tears, Anyone. And if you guys want to see my other channel, I will pop a link to it right here. I am actually so crazy, crazy busy with my Real Men Craft 2 channel that it is just blowing up. Um, but you guys... Please do me a favor, talk about the channel, share it with your friends, anybody who loves horror, whether it's a book, movie, or just anything, a walk in the dark. Subscribe below, and I will see you guys in the next scary review. Take care, you guys. I'll see you in the next one. And like always, live your life like a book, you guys. I just found out over the weekend that I lost my 46-year-old niece. Uh, I'm not going to get upset and I'm not going to cry here, but rest in peace and rest in heaven. Candy Lynn. Uh, yeah, she was only 46. And I was devastated when I heard the news yesterday. But um, yeah, you guys, take care. Live your life like a book. Just don't turn that last page. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.